Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, you'll learn about anomaly detection based on deep learning with MVTech Halcon. To train an anomaly detection model, you only need good images. Thus, anomaly detection is especially useful for applications with two classes where you have many good samples, but the defects are rare and diverse. To use anomaly detection, you don't have to provide labeled data. Additionally, only a few images are required. In some cases, as few as 10 good images is sufficient. This also makes the training very fast. Therefore, anomaly detection is quick to prototype, making it easy to try out for your application. However, if you can provide labeled data for all your various classes, supervised methods, like for example classification, might perform even better. Now, in this video, we'll go through the HDevelop example DL Anomaly Detection Workflow.hdev and learn the most important aspects of anomaly detection along the way. The goal of the application is to inspect glass bottles to detect defects like these. First, we specify the path where the image class folders are located. Optionally, we can also limit the subdirectories that are read. For training, only images in subfolders called good or OK are used. Additionally, you can specify a directory with ground truth anomaly regions. After the training, this data can be used to compare the ground truth and results. However, this step is optional as well. As mentioned before, you can train without any elaborate labeling. Another important parameter is the image size. For anomaly detection, these values need to be multiples of 32. The smaller the expected defects are, the larger the image needs to be. The parameter complexity controls the capacity of the model to deal with applications that are more complex. This can include, for example, changes in color, intensity, size, or shape. Increasing the parameter leads to longer run times during training and inference. Now, we can start the preparation of the data. First, we read the data set using the paths we defined before. Then, we split the data set into three subsets for training, validation, and testing. These subsets are used a bit differently compared to our other deep learning methods. You'll learn more as we go along. Note that for anomaly detection, if you provide anomalous images, they are all assigned to the test split. Next, we read one of the initial networks provided by MVTech and set the model parameters we defined previously. Then we pre process the dataset according to, among other things, the image size we specified before. Following that, we do an example-specific pre-processing. Here, we apply a threshold to reduce the domain and exclude the background. Thus, the algorithm can focus on the relevant parts of the image, avoiding false results. Additionally, this speeds up the application. We highly recommend adapting this part to your own application. Otherwise, you should set the variable example-specific pre-processing to false. After the preprocessing, some samples are visualized. If available, the ground truth anomaly regions are displayed as well. Note that image quality characteristics like exposure and focus should be as consistent as possible. Otherwise, deviations during inference might be considered anomalies. Next, we will train the anomaly detection model. The error threshold determines when the model is considered good enough during training. Usually, you don't have to adapt this value. Max num epochs determines the maximum number of epochs if the error threshold is not reached during training. The domain ratio determines the ratio of pixels that are used from the preprocessed images. You might want to increase it in cases where you have a lot of variance in your images, only very few images or your images are quite small. 
Increasing the regularization noise can help if the training doesn't work, for example, because your data has too little variation. Now let's train this model with these parameters. For this step, the train split of the provided dataset is used. After training, you can inspect the dictionary train results to see the final error and number of epochs. The final error represents how well the model learned the training data. In general, you're good to go if this value is below the default error threshold. Then we write the final model before evaluating it further. To understand what we try to optimize with the evaluation, let's first have a look at the results. When applying the trained model, we get an anomaly image and an anomaly score. The anomaly score can be influenced with the parameter standard deviation factor. For example, if the defects are small, a larger value might be better. In the anomaly image, we need a threshold to decide which pixels represent an anomaly. We call this the anomaly segmentation threshold. This threshold is computed based on the validation split. Additionally, we need a threshold to decide whether the image is classified as containing an anomaly. We call this the anomaly classification threshold. This threshold is computed based on the test split. Both values can be calculated with the procedure Compute DL Anomaly Thresholds. Consider this visualization. You can see anomaly scores on the x-axis, and the fraction of wrongly classified images for a given anomaly classification threshold on the y-axis. If you provide both good and anomalous samples, the anomaly classification thresholds comprises three thresholds. The first threshold, in blue, represents the threshold where there would be no wrongly classified good images. The second threshold, in red, represents the threshold where there would be no wrongly classified anomalous images. Finally, the black threshold represents the threshold where the sum of false results is minimal. Note that the red and the black threshold are identical in this example. In most cases, one of these thresholds is suitable for your application. Or, this being Halkin, you can adapt these values however your application requires it. With these parameters set, we can visualize the evaluation on the test split. You can see pie charts on the precision and recall and a confusion matrix. Lastly, let's have a short look at the inference. It's important to use the same preprocessing as during training. Then we apply the trained model. Let's have a look at the DL result dictionary again. Using the procedure Threshold DL Anomaly Results with the thresholds we computed earlier, we extend this dictionary with these thresholds, the resulting segmented anomaly region and classification. With the procedure Dev Display DL Data, we visualize the final result. This concludes this tutorial. Now you can check out this example and try it out for yourself. Thank you for watching.